react. And remember, you can find our top stories on channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. You can also watch us on the go. Do that on your mobile device. Just log on to emberchannelstv.com and download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. The Channels TV and the Channels 24 apps will give you access to news and updates. You'll also have access to the eyewitness feature. With this, you can share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu. Follow the instructions you see. The River State Governor Nyesam Wike has decried the state of infrastructure in some tertiary institutions in the country. He says the situation where a faculty in a university exists without its own faculty structure is unacceptable and detrimental to the development of education in Nigeria. The governor was speaking during the commissioning of the Faculty of Environmental Science in the River State University, which according to him is part of an ongoing effort to improve learning conditions in the state. We can't talk about quality of education when you don't even have offices and classrooms where staff and students will use. Yes, you may have the lecturers. Yes, you may have the teachers, but if the facilities are not there, can you have quality education? No. Certainly not. It makes me cry that since 2006, these projects were awarded. Previous on the 7th never thought it fit that we should give our children quality education by making sure that we are not denied accreditation from what the process law read. It was very pathetic as a concerned faculty of environmental sciences. Every faculty should have its own faculty building. River State Governor Nyesam Wike. The Canadian government is supporting 25,000 families in Bochi State to improve their means of livelihood through agriculture. Now that funding program, which comes under the Nigeria Youth Entrepreneurship and Women's Empowerment Project, is in collaboration with the state government. Other donor agencies are also supporting 16,000 entrepreneurs and small businesses in the state. <laughs> This cultural performance in Bauchi State is part of the welcome wagon for the Canadian High Commissioner to Nigeria, Christopher Thornley, for the launch of the Youth Entrepreneurship and Women's Empowerment Project in DAS, local government area. The goal is improving capacity of women and youth to be productive by supporting agricultural inputs and finance, not forgetting discouraging the practice of early and forced marriage. By reducing the barriers to equality, and helping to create better opportunities, women and girls can be powerful agents of change, improving their own lives and those of their families, communities and countries. Transparency and loyalty above all... The Bauchi state government is appreciative of the help of the Canadian government to empower its citizens. This is very, very good. We know that uh, Nobody comes from somewhere just to come and he doesn't find a conducive atmosphere to assist. I want to appreciate uh, Global Affairs Canada through the implementation agency MEDA for their focus and their foresight on coming up with this initiative to support youth entrepreneurship and women empowerment. For the beneficiaries, it will go a long way towards achieving the set objectives. Without their help, I don't think we can reach the stage we are now. We are very, very much grateful to them because, you know, some of us women here, before they are stranded, they have nothing to do. After the launch of the program, the entourage visited the Township Maternity Clinic in Das, where the Canadian High Commissioner made a symbolic presentation of maternal and child health equipment donated by Plan International for distribution to 216 health facilities across the state. 25,000 families will benefit from the Youth Entrepreneurship and Women's Empowerment Project in Bauchi State. The 
federal government warned that it will not tolerate the violation of traffic laws by convoy drivers, military personnel and law enforcement agents during and after the festive season. The secretary to the government of the federation, Mr. Mustafa, gave this warning at a capacity building workshop organized by the United Nations Economic Commission in Abuja for officials of the Federal Road Safety Commission. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, at least 5,000 road crashes occurred in the first half of the year. This led to the death of more than 2,000 people. I was alive. So, over 200 officers of the Federal Road Safety Corps were drawn from different parts of the country to participate in this training on the United Nations Road Safety Legal Instrument on Traffic Signs and Regulations. The idea is to strengthen the capacity of the officers on traffic management. The call will continue to embrace support that will not only assist FRC personnel but also our stakeholders from time to time. It is only through continuous education and enlightenment that we can all be become better and professionals of honor. Speed violation remains the leading cause of road crashes, contributing over 55% of the road traffic accidents recorded by the Corps on a monthly basis across the country. This is one area of concern especially as the yield tide approaches. Government drivers, especially those that drive us around, convoy drivers, must not disrupt flow of traffic or act in contradistinction to traffic officers' directives. Let me also admonish the military and all law enforcement agencies to cooperate with the Federal Road Safety Corps to rule out the end of the year operations and beyond. Fifty of us traveled Nigerian roads. We drove at night. We didn't have an accident. We were not trapped and we did not die on the dead traps. I think all of us would just do well to understand that there are speed limits on our highways. There are breaking distances in driving. And even if the road conditions are good, if you don't observe the speed limits, you endanger yourselves. The commission is preparing her officers ahead of the yield tide, and the hope is that these men will leave this training better equipped to effectively manage traffic on the nation's highways. It's sad news for business owners at the electronical wing of the Wiat Market in Calabar, South, South Nigeria, as over 50 shops and property worth billions of Naira were engulfed in flames after a fire incident. It's a bitter experience for business owners at the electronic wing of the popular Wiat Market in Calabar Cross River State as they look upon what was once a bazaar of electronic appliances replaced by charred remains. The traders are left with feelings of anger, sorrow and devastation as they attempt to put out the raging fire. I was in my house. When someone just come in there, it's fire in the market. So I have to run and I only run to go to the fire service. I went to the state, uh, state uh, fire service. They said the effect is not in order and they don't have water. I have to go to airport fire service. Still the same thing. They said there is no vehicle that they cannot come. So we are very confused. We don't know what to do. Police operatives arrived the scene to prevent hoodlums from looting shops and touched by the fire. The cause of the inferno remains unknown, but the victims believe the delay by fire service officials worsened the situation. All the part of us on the some of the area boys, they come even and help us bring water because there's no fire. We call fire service. They didn't respond to us. They said there's no water, there's no nothing that today. We try to help ourselves and learn it. And plus police too, they even help us too. They appeal to the government to come to your aid as their source of livelihood have gone up in flames. Over 100 shops are burned down here. Billions of naira are gone. People are crying. Look at people crying over there. Look at the fire everywhere. The fire is still burning. Many people are wounded there. So please, please, we are begging the government to come and help us. There is a promise from the government to victims that intervention packages are on the way. Basically, what we are doing now is to see how we can now have exact figures of what really went wrong and the traders are affected. That will enable us to see how we can quantify what to give to who. 
You know, because the governor is very passionate about what has just happened, and he's not saying that, okay, move in there and see how you can resolve it. That's why I'm here. It's a sad occasion for these traders as they continue to hope that the help promised by the state government comes in time. And the federal government is finding ways to reduce the effect of HIV and AIDS in Nigeria. We'll tell you more when we return.